Today we're going to learn how to take a picture, superimpose it onto a billboard using the perspective filter all on Affinity Photo on the iPad. This is a really fun tutorial and it's a very useful one. It's something that I've had to do time and time again through the years where I've designed up some artwork and the client wants to see it in a certain situation in a certain place and you have to mock it up. It's very useful. It's a lot of fun. So let's get into it. Here we are inside Affinity Photo and I have simply imported this image from unsplash.com. There's a link in the description of where you can find and download this photo. So feel Feel free to do that and follow along if you like. What we're learning today is quite a useful thing if you are in advertising. I was actually in an advertising company for a year, many years ago, and this was quite a common thing I had to do. If I made up the artwork, the client would then want to see how the artwork looks in situation. In this case, it's a billboard. Sometimes it's bus bags. Sometimes it's in the side of bus sit shelters. Many, many different situations. You do up the artwork. And then the client wants to see it looks good, but how does that work, artwork look in a real life situation? And that's what we're going to learn today. And today, even in my current full time job, from time to time, I have to do stuff like this. We've got a billboard from unsplash.com and we need some artwork. If you know what my favorite film is, if you don't, you haven't watched all my videos because my favorite film is Back to the Future. And we're going to put a Back to the Future reference in this billboard. So to do that, we're just going to bring up the wee dog just by moving your finger up from the bottom. And we're going to bring up the files to the side here. I've already downloaded this image. So I'm just going to drag it across and then move this wee dog out of the way. I'll bring it up so you can see what it is. It is, of course, Back to the Future, but it's not the film. It's the musical. Currently, Back to the Future, this is useless information you don't want to know, but you're going to get anyway very quickly. Back to the Future is now a musical in the West End in London, and just recently it's been announced that it's going on Broadway, and this is the guy who will be playing Marty McFly in Broadway for Back to the Future. Currently, it's way too big. We'll bring it down. Even if we wanted to do something like this, it obviously doesn't look right at all. So we'll have to put this into perspective. So we're going to go into the filters studio. The filter studio is like a wee filter, the wee icon on the right hand side. And there's absolutely tons of filters. What's nice about the filters and adjustment studio is you can see a wee preview of what's going to happen if you apply that adjustment or filter. In this case, you can also go up here. It says all filters. If you go across, That'll show you just all the blurs, all the distortions, and that's what we want to go into. I'll go back into it for a second. Sharpen, noise, and then all filters again. So in, instead of going all the way, I think perspective is at the very bottom. I can just simply go across to distortions, and there it is. And, and all I have to do now is click on it. And we've got a new contextual menu, and you can see dots or squares really have been added to the corners. And this, this is a lot of fun. I like getting quite zoomed in. Again, zoom in by pinching in and out with your fingers and moving the canvas around. It's just two fingers. So we've got this dot and I'll actually use my pen. You can use your finger, but I prefer using my pen. And let's see, we'll get nice and closely in. There we go. Zoom out, there's one corner. And then if we move this roughly and you can see, it's doing some really cool things, but straight away you can see what we're doing. And maybe the better thing to do is to quickly get it into position so you can see what we're working with and then zoom in and get it more refined. So I don't really want any of this white. I'll get it nice closely up to this gray color. We'll scroll down here again. Two fingers just moves the canvas. Any two fingers, two fingers or two fingers and a or one finger and a thumb even. And again, we'll just use the pencil. And there's a bit of a shadow here. And I'm going to kind of put it quite close to this shadow. We'll do something about, we'll maybe add a wee inner shadow in a wee while. But we're just getting the perspective right at the minute. Let's bring it down so there's no white showing. And let me just have a zoom out and have a quick look just so there's no white showing and i don't think it is and you know what that didn't take long at all and that's really really good and really really impressive you can go to the split view and for whatever reason you can see what it looked like before and after and that's really cool uh, there's other things here there's a grid you can see what it looks like in a grid 
uh, a grid. And th this could be useful if you then want to apply other layers or effects on top of this. But just for today's purpose, we're just going to go to apply. And if we we'll go into our layer studio, this has now applied it. So if, if say we've made a mistake and uh, there's a bit of white showing or we've put it too far over, there's nothing you can do about that. The only thing you can do is two fingers, two fingers again, and that'll put it back. But I'm going to go three fingers to redo that because the perspective's now locked in. There's no way of getting these wee dots or these wee corners back into place. You'd have to bring in, delete this file or delete this layer, bring in the file again and do it again. So once you hit apply, the perspective has been locked in and there's no way of changing that. But in this occasion, we've took our time and I think we've done a great job at bringing it into perspective. Just on that, I'm not too sure what the size of this billboard was. Normally what you want to do is would have the right size of the billboard and you would d design up the artwork, in this case Back to the Future Musical, to the right size of that, the right size of that billboard, and then you would place it in. I'm kind of guessing, and I think it looks quite well, but normally if you were doing this, you would have the right size, but that's not always possible. This is looking good, but you know what? I'm not sold by the effect just yet. At the minute, it does look as if we've simply just superimposed this and it, it doesn't look too realistic. So now by using adjustment layers, I'm actually going to try to blend this Back to the Future musical artwork in a wee bit more. So we've got that layer selected. We're going to go into the adjustment layer or the adjustment studio. And there's a, a video I did uh, a good few videos ago all about adjustments and the adjustment studio and how to use that. And please check that out if you haven't already done so, because it's a video that goes into quite a bit of detail about the adjustment studio. So what am I going to go into now? I'm maybe going to give it a curves adjustment and you can see the curves is applying to everything in the image. I just want it to apply to this Back to the Future musical artwork and I just did that by moving it into the middle of the layer. And now if I make any changes up and down this wee graph, it's just applying it to this layer. So I'll reset that. I think what I want to do with this graph, I want to get this wee dot at the bottom and bring it up. Now if I bring it up, it really fades it out and it fades it out to white or brightens it to white maybe, should I say. I just want to bring it up so it's just kind of, and really you're just eyeballing it, just matching it. And all that's done, I can hide and show this layer. It's just brightened the image up a wee bit. And to me, it's just blended it in a little bit more. And what I also want to do, just to sell the effect even more, is go into the Layer Effects Studio. Maybe about a month and a half ago, I went through nearly all these effects in separate videos in the detail, and you can check that out too. I'm plugging a lot of videos today. I'm going to go back to, never mind previous videos, Andrew, we're on this video. So, uh, but all these are covered in previous videos. But what I want to do, just to sell this effect a wee bit more, is click the inner shadow, it's applied or it's clicked, but nothing's happening. There's a new contextual menu toolbar has appeared at the bottom. And if I bring the radius to say 10, we'll zoom in a wee bit. And if I bring the offset, we're actually applying this to the adjustment layer, which we don't want to do. That's a wee mistake by me, but it's a good learning uh, process. Sometimes that happens. You're working on something and you're not sure what's happening. And sometimes you have to take a step back. In this case, I had the curves adjustment layer selected. I actually want our artwork selected. So now that our artwork layer is selected, we now go into the Layer Effects Studio, click Enter Shadow, change the radius to say 10, change the offset to 10, and you can see what's happening now. There's a bit of an inner shadow, and I don't want too much of an inner shadow. Let me just see how that looks before and after. That's before, that's after, that's before, that's after. And you know what? That's very, very subtle, but it just sells the effect even more. And I'm happy with that. That's looking really, really well. 
Is there anything else I would do with this? I could be tempted just to do another adjustment layer on this here artwork and I'll go in and see, I'll maybe go into brightness and contrast and I'll just play with the brightness a wee bit. Again, it's affecting the whole image. So what I need to do is, it's at the very top, I need to click on it or tap on it and drag it into this artwork file. Now, if I bring it down, let's see. You can use different values by clicking into it, and I'm just eyeballing this. Really, you're just you're just making it what looks good or what looks good in your eyes. I maybe want to. I maybe want to keep the con or the brightness to zero, and I maybe just want to bring the contrast down just a wee bit. That's minus eighteen. That's before. Oh. That's before, after, before, uh, after. And I think that is just helping sell the effect ever so, so much. The artwork's still, it's still quite bright. So I might bring it up just, just a wee bit to 20%. And I think I like that even more. Again, it's just, we're just eyeballing it now and we're just seeing what looks good. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we'll just turn that on and off. And then if we turn that layer off, that's the, the curves adjustment. That really makes a big difference. This just dulls it down ever so much. And you could play about with this all day. Even that looks okay. I'm not sure what I like actually, if I'm being honest. If I like it just a wee bit brighter. Or if I like it there. You know what I might do? I might go into the brightness and contrast. I might click these three dots and I might do the opacity of this there down to 50% because I'm not sure what I like. So if I go in between and I think that looks really well. The final thing I would do to this layer is to color grade it. Now, sometimes I color grade it in a different app and I'm going to be reviewing that app. Hopefully at the end of summer, you could apply what you call a, a LUT, and we're going to look into LUT in later videos. I'm just going to go into the adjustment layer again, and we're going to come down to Lens Filter. Really what Lens Filter does is it just puts a filter across the whole image. In this occasion, it's just applied it to our Back to the Future artwork, so I want to bring it up to the very top. And hopefully you can see that on the video, that it has made a bit of a change to the whole image. If I turn it off, that's it off, that's it on, that's it off, that's it on. And really, it's just used this orange color and applied a bit of a simple color grade across the whole image. And if you're wondering why I've chosen orange, why I've chosen a lens filter, we've got a palm tree here, which suggests it's somewhere sunny and it's quite bright and quite warm. And just by warming it up with this orange color, we're not just affecting the artwork, we're affecting the whole picture and really, that just blends the artwork and the picture in just a wee bit more. And it helps sells the effect that this has been superimposed in. And that's before, that's after. And it even, even dulls down these blues, which is quite nice. So that's how to use the perspective tool in a Findlay photo. And this is brilliant. I still today have to design up artwork in my full-time job. And then mock it up in situations where the artwork is going to be used. And this is also great if you're wanting to mock up something on computers, computer screens, iPhone screens, or Android screens. It's a whole different range of situations use this effect. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. If you have any ideas or suggestions how I could use this tool in another tutorial, or if you'd like to see something else mocked up in this way, just let me know in the comments below and I'll maybe make a tutorial on that too. Please like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.